Excuse me, little dog. Alright, guys. It is a gray, gloomy, rainy day here in the end time that I got a nasty little wet dog in my lap. Oh, good lord. It is a gray, gloomy October day in August. I think we might be somewhere around Thursday. <coughs> I've lost track. August 9th, 10th, somewhere around there. 2023. It is 64 degrees here in, uh, <coughs> in Bugs in a Jar Farm, and we have a full house. There's this big-ass party going on down the street, which you'll hear more about. So, uh, the overflow from that party is taking over here. I love this. Well, I'm going to just check in here. Her shirt has a picture of a space alien on it, and it says, I don't believe in humans. <laughs> I don't believe in humans. Hallelujah! <coughs> so I just went on to Amazon.com and treated myself to an I don't believe in humans t-shirt and I encourage you to do the same. Uh, so anyway guys, uh, you know, it's it's been too long since I have done a full-fledged view from Zombie Island. Uh, you know, Andy the Gardener, years ago, Andy the Gardener uh, really hit his stride as a curmudgeonly doomer writer. Uh, but Andy, you know, you fell off, brother. You fell off for a few years. But Andy the Gardener, hallelujah, Andy the Gardener is back. He is back with a vengeance. And Andy the Gardener has had about enough of this space alien UFO bullshit. Once and for all, he wants to, to settle the score on this and move on uh, with, with our lives. And he was, this was Andy the Gardener's <clears throat> response to this, uh, to this, uh, guest column in Newsweek magazine where this fellow whose name I have forgotten already, good guy, that whistleblower, not David Grush, the other guy, the more believable guy, you know, who was testifying before Congress, Ryan Graves might be his name, where Ryan Graves was talking about how all of these commercial airline pilots uh, were that the vast majority of reports of UFOs, or I'm not going to call them UAPs, they're, 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 they're fucking UFOs, coming from commercial airline pilots. I remember when I was reading uh, <clears throat> that thing in, uh, in Newsweek, about commercial airline pilots seeing all these UFOs. You know, I've mentioned before that my mama, Elaine Mitchell, she was a shrink. That is what I, you can probably tell that I am the product of being raised by a shrink. So anyway, somehow, I can't remember how my mama ended up being a shrink for a, a lot of commercial airline pilots, maybe, you know, one of them came to see her with his problems. And anyway, but she had several uh, of these clients for years, uh, commercial airline pilots. And I remember my mother, uh, you, you would have loved my mother, guys. Uh, saying that after getting to know commercial airline pilots, she never wanted to get on a fucking airplane again. That by and large, at least from her experiences, these commercial airline pilots were the single biggest nut job wackos that she'd ever met. Uh, just shaking her head. Now, of course, I don't remember any specific details, but I just remember my mother several times having a rant about commercial airline pilots, complete 
fucking lunatics. And uh, anyway, that was that was my shrink mama's review. Uh, might have something to do with all of these commercial airline pilots, but uh, we're gonna let Andy the gardener <coughs> respond to uh, if commercial airline pilots say UFOs are real. Got to be so. <coughs> Take it away, Andy the gardener. Thanks for name-checking me as one of the dissenters on this current UFO alien hysteria. The idea that those pilots are credible witnesses is nonsense. There is no selection process in the pilot training academies or wherever the fuck the highly coordinated high testosterone alpha chimps who want to become pilots go to train. Pilots are no more credible witnesses or rational than random people pulled off the street. All they need to do is not crash a plane or helicopter competently, which is probably easier than not crashing a car considering all the hazards drivers have to deal with. In other words, flying a plane does not mean a human is necessarily competent in other areas. <clears throat> if hopeful baby pilots were weeded out because they were irrational or believed in such stupid things like virtually everybody else, there would not be many pilots and the trillion dollar aviation industry would collapse. I, I am guessing, but most baby pilots do become pilots, just like most, most baby doctors become doctors, and most baby architects become architects, because it is a pretty low bar, and the investment in training needs to be recouped. The number of pilots who have seen something is trivial compared to those that have not, i.e. ones that identified whatever it was correctly as a natural phenomenon. There's probably a good correlation between belief in aliens and the general population and the ratio of pilots who have seen something, and there's always capable, there's, there's always credible witnesses to every paranormal thing ever dreamt up by the fertile minds of chimps, gods, ghosts, demons, fairies, Bigfoot, gnomes, the Loch Ness fucking monster, and an endless plethora of other bogus man monsters. All have their own credible witnesses who swear to their deathbed they saw something in the woodshed. Many are pilots. I expect even politicians. <clears throat> Do all these fucking things exist just because a few humans believe they saw something? There are plenty of credible witnesses who swear blind they saw explosions on the 9-11 footage, where in fact it was simply air being violently forced out by the collapsing floors they saw. And many credible experts will swear the fact steel doesn't melt in fires means they must have been exploded by the government, even though it makes no sense whatsoever considering fucking jumbo jets just flew into the towers. And Building 7 should not have collapsed, even though it was partially demolished and there was an in untended fire. <clears throat> Anyway, we will let, we will let uh, Osama respond to that. Uh, 
just for the record, as Andy knows, I am a truther light. I do believe the planes hit the buildings, but I do not believe that's what the planes, uh, that, that, that it was the planes that brought the buildings down. And since he mentions ghosts, I don't know if Andy the gardener has heard, I've told the story several times, where I lived in a haunted house for several years in Oregon. I lived in a haunted house. Okay, dude? Uh, <laughs> and, and what's weird about that, I still don't believe other people when they tell me about their ghost. I believe in my ghost, but not their ghost. But anyway, we're here to talk about space aliens, not ghost in 9-11. Okay. The fact is, there is always an explanation for the odd things credible people see or believe or believe. Just because a credible person cannot understand or explain something does not mean someone else more skeptical or experienced cannot, can't i.e. a proper, trained, experienced skeptic. Being a pilot is not a qualification for debunking BS. I've mentioned Thunderfoot before. He does some excellent debunking videos of so-called UFO footage. It's laughable how ridiculous this footage is ducks flying along, out-of-focus shots of aircraft engine heat, reflections on glass moving in physically impossible ways, that sort of thing, or they didn't have their camera handy, in spite of the billions spent by the U.S. military on the most up-to-date camera technology ever invented, so, we will just have to take their word for it that they saw something, but it's always the same sort of rubbish. And isn't it funny that, just like with the 9-11 conspiracy bullshit, it's mainly co confined to the USA. I'm not at all sure, uh, not, not at all sure that the UFO thing is mainly confined to the USA. Andy, I remember I was down in this fucking rabbit hole for several years. I assure you that, uh, and I'm not going to debate uh, Andy the gardener, but for anyone, Andy, for you to make that statement, your, your, your credibility just uh, lost some credibility. This is a worldwide phenomenon, has been. Anyway, uh, it's mainly confined to the USA and similar sorts of people as to the supposed cover-up of all these crashed UFOs. If they crashed at the same frequency as human aircraft, i.e. very rarely, unfortunately, there would have to be millions of UFOs flying about, not crashing, whereas the sodding film footage of them, all taken by 8 billion humans carrying mobile phones, just one bit of non-controversial, undebunkable film foot footage would suffice, as Carl Sagan said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof, etc. I have never said this before, but I have seen something myself. I went to the garden to fetch after my cat in for the night, and I saw strange lights moving in the clouds about a mile away. There were three lights, totally circular, dancing around in some kind of inexplicable pattern. I could not think of any explanation, so I concluded it must have been aliens or something. 
for about 30 seconds. Then I realized the police headquarters was directly below and they were probably just testing a helicopter searchlight or whatever. Sadly, I am not a pilot, so nobody will believe me. What the alien UFO nonsense all boils, boils down to ultimately is this. Technology triumphalism. If aliens can do the Star Trek infinite energy and growth space colonization things, humans can too. That's it in a nutshell. It's why there's all this fuss and why there's videos trying to explain the Fermi paradox. Pathetic. <laughs> I, uh, I don't think we're going to uh, add Andy the Gardener's name to a believer in UFOs, but uh, I don't know if Andy the Gardener believes in humans or not. Uh, anyway, I guess that will have to be another comment for another day. Does Andy the Gardener believe in humans? Oh, Jesus. But with that, I gotta go out there and stock toilet paper in the outhouse while I still can get out there and stock toilet paper in the outhouse before the UFOs come to get you. Bye, guys. <clears throat> yes, little wet dog. Oh, man. It is one dreary day. It is 64 degrees on August 9th or wherever we are. 64 degrees here at 3 in the afternoon. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go sweep this deck off. Oh, I've been dealing with that goddamn wet carpet and the other fucking tiny house. I, I had to, I had to drag every single fucking thing out of that house. I had to rip out the carpet. I had to rip out the uh, carpet underlayment. <coughs> now I have to haul all that fucking carpet and underlayment off to the goddamn dump. Uh, Jesus. And vacation and rental super host. Job is never done. Oh my God.